It's been three weeks since I ran with most dope's money. If his constant threats weren't to be believed, my reputation had now been tarnished beyond repair. Just like IRL mate, Iron Forge is the school hallway all over again. And you're the kid with acne and bracers that gets kicked around after this if you step into Iron Forge. The irony in that statement is that when I happen to be in Iron Forge, I met with more praise than ever before. Finding a party for dungeons is instant, and never in my life have I had this many people want a death roll with me. Oh, and whilst checking the Iron Forge mailbox in peace, I saw three letters from the man himself. A sob story about how he was a long time viewer and I should do the right thing. I sent his three letters back along with a banana and wrote, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Most dope opened a complaint on the Nogginfogger EU Discord server. I defended myself from these harsh allegations by saying, I did it, I'm guilty. Most dope even took to Twitter to beg for his money, saying he was still waiting on his gold. I replied with a visual representation of how long he was gonna be waiting for said gold. When I logged into WoW, he claimed that I was now done for, banned from Nogginfogger and kicked from my guild. But truth be told, the only reason I got banned from the server's discord is because my friends kept posting various pictures of Thanos and I happened to be guilty by association. And by the way, my guild didn't kick me. My guild publicly condemned my actions. <laughs> I can't wait to raid with them. It's gonna be a most dope experience. In fact, my time in WoW's never been better. Just a few weeks ago, this world was tarnished beyond repair. Absolutely unplayable. How come now I can go wherever I want? Quest in peace? Even get into Blackrock Mountain? <sighs> the reason why Azeroth is absolutely serene is the release of Phase 3. By adding two giant instanced PvP war zones to the game designed around PvP for the PvP World PvP. World PvP is far from the most effective way to gain points. And that's all PvP people are here for. They want those fucking points. Boom! <laughs> that guy got fucked up. <laughs> are you with me so far? Great. That leaves us with Warsong Gulch and Alterag Valley. One map, which is damn near perfect level design. An intensely enjoyable experience that really supports the structural foundation of what makes PvP enjoyable. A phenomenal addition to World of Warcraft. Some people do play this. And Alterac Valley, that people only play to farm honor points. Both teams right straight past each other to the enemy objective and each game ends in 10 minutes. Incredibly boring and there really is no reason to play it. By the way, this is the one that has hundreds of lobbies at any given time. But that's not what we're here for today. Last time was all about PvP, dungeons, gambling and cringy role playing. So today we're doing the boring episode. It's all about long, unbearable, monotonous, repetitive, soul-draining, terribly designed quest lines. And here's why. When you get to the max level, endgame content comes largely in form of raids, which is a 40-man dungeon. To get into these raids, you have to get the proper attunement. Like for example, for Molten Core, you gotta go to this rock and click it. Pretty simple. So anyways, in preparation for reaching 60, I decided to also do the attunement for the Onyxia raid which in stark contrast has just a couple more steps. <laughs> this quest is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I start by having a stern talking with Helendis Riverhorn. She tasks me to kill 15 black broodlings, 10 black dragon spawns, one black drake, and four black wormkins. Even with phase three taking the majority of ADHD players away from the open world, Burning Steps is just a zone where you're prone to encounter a deficit of attention. After dying a few times, I managed to run away with a sliver of health. A couple of lines broskies took me in. They saw my perils, after which they ganged up with me to cleanse this place from horde scum. <laughs> Holy shit, almost. In under an hour, I managed to complete the quest, and now I'm tasked to travel to Lakeshire. When our griffins parted ways, I knew I'd 
clicked the wrong destination. After a bit of a detour, I make it to Lake Shire, where Magistrate Solomon sends me to Stormwind, where Lady Katrana Prestor calls the Magistrate paranoid and refers to his men as an encampment of riffraff that are most probably suffering from heat stroke. Oh shit, I just remembered riffraff exists. <laughs> now I don't follow the plotline, but that is a pretty good burn, that's a diss right there. Anyways, I then go back to Lakeshire, only to be told to go straight back to the burning steps and report to Marshall Maxwell, <laughs> who sends me to speak with Ragged John. Talk to me. I listen to Ragged John's tale in record time, after which I journey to Blackrock Depths. On the way there, I upset my WoW GF with mean words, and she committed Harakiri to show her dissatisfaction. This was the turning point, where I would go from having a bad time to having an unbearable time. I entered BRD and cleared my way to the prison cell of Marshall Windsor. This seemed to be the final part of the quest, so I looked up the quest chain on trustworthy google.com, which led me to the WoW Wiki. The WoW Wiki told me that I had to kill mobs inside BRD until one of them randomly drops a crumbled up note. Together with Larry and Amiri, I started clearing out the mobs in hopes that the crumbled up note would drop. You ever in a sticky situation? Boom! Actually just jump around the gate, you don't need the key. And the greatest thing about this trick is that you fucking die anyway. <laughs> and it was at this very moment that Larry convinced us that we needed to three-man anger forge. Considering that I had to kill that boss for the part after the note, I obliged in hopes that the note would drop before we got to the boss. It didn't, and then we wiped to anger forge. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times. We didn't wipe against Anger Forge five times. We wiped six fucking times before I finally caved in and told my friends to go fuck themselves. There's absolutely no way I'm not inviting a fourth. Hold up, listen, pay attention. Here's the key to my suffering and your enjoyment. I actually hadn't finished the quest for that note to drop. <laughs> So I res the spirit healer, fly to the burning steps, talk to Marshall Maxwell, and return to finally kill General Angerforge. Not before drowning in the lava and walking a moderate distance though. And of course Hand of Justice didn't drop. It's a fucking 4% drop chance, Larry. So we basically did all that just for the bonding experience. Ah uh, man, this is what I love about classic WoW, man. Ah, uh, it's just a meaningful journey. <laughs> Anyways. As the sun literally rises, I go kill slaves until the note drops. THE NOTE! Once it does, I'm finally able to continue this disgusting quest line at 7.30 in the morning. Then it finally felt like I was catching a bit of wind in my sails when I executed... A perfect jump. However, when I then traveled by foot all the way to Marshall Maxwell, only to see no quest marker, as Marshall Windsor, the guy inside the dungeon, is the guy I should give the note to, I wasn't exactly excited. So I go all the way back inside the dungeon, hand the man the note, and get the quest a shred of hope, tasking me to kill Angerforge and Lord Golem. So I get a squad together, we skank our way through Blackrock Depths, kill the two bosses for the quest, I hand in the quest items to Marshall Windsor, which activates, hands down, the longest escort mission in Azeroth. When I say it literally took half an hour, I mean it literally took half an hour of just walking this dude from one pack of mobs to the next. Once we were finally done with an experience that I consider a pure detriment to my existence, now we're about halfway through the Anixia attunement. So we yet again go conversate with Marshall Maxwell, who sends us to the gates of Stormwind to talk to Reginald Windsor. And this guy, of course, activated the quest right before I got there. So then I had to just walk around Stormwind and just wait. Just wait. I was starting to get a little bit irritated at this point. So anyways, I wait till he's done with the quest, and then I start working with this absolute unit of a man. Not just does he reveal that Lady Katrana was actually Onyxia in disguise the whole time. He also comes with an escort mission. YES! Except he's actually an unbeatable god and you're the one being escorted. That's, that's a bit of a saving grace. 
after very slowly RP walking throughout the entire city of Stormwind, we reach the throne room, where Onyxia's true form is revealed. Big reveal. Oh, whoa. She summons 10 Dragonkin Death Guards and vanishes into thin air. The tricky part of this quest is standing back and not even helping a little bit. If you help, you'll get killed in one hit. If you stand back, Reginald Windsor will take care of business. After a long hard-fought battle, I spoke to High Lord Bolvar, who gave me a fragment of the dragon's eye, and asks me to seek out a dragon named Haley, who's disguised as a human in Winter Spring. So, on the other side of the world. Hey, whoa! I travel to Winter Spring and use the power of the internet to find out that I don't want to go through the manifestation of tedium and that I can actually skip the death caves if I make this extremely hard jump which will actually let you get to Haley without doing the death caves. Unless you are unfathomably stupid, so unbearably lame-brained that you would step on the portal to the death caves. <laughs> That's one of the classic blunders. It actually teleports you into the Caves of Death, where you'll die. <laughs> Forced to resident the Spirit Healer, I'm greeted by the friendly Horde players of Winter Spring. They said to me, nice res Cygnus fool with, with body language. However, Phase 2 had me more than accustomed to the stale corpse walking, which is pretty much half the game sometimes. So I made it back to the annoying jump, avoided the incantation circle, and spoke to Haley, who sadly informs me that I'm not done yet. I'd have to kill the final boss of Upper Blackrock Spire. <sighs> so I <coughs> go to the town of Winter Spring to buy the schematics for the Thorium Tube, go back to Ironforge and use gambling proceeds to level my engineering to 300. I then procured 24 mithril bars, 4 hearts of fire, 6 true silver bars, 2 star rubies, 2 gold bars, and 2 gallons of goblin rocket fuel. I hired a blacksmith to use 10 of the mithril bars, 2 true silver bars, and 2 gold bars to craft me 2 inlaid mithril cylinders. With all these items together, I crafted the mithril mechanical dragonling. I then spent a steep sum of money to acquire the schematics for the Arcanite Dragonling. I would go on to procure 6 Rugged Leather, 6 Lesser Eternal Essences, and 30 Dream Dust, which an enchanter used to bless me with 6 Enchanted Leather and 10 Enchanted Thorium Bars. After which I crafted 6 Thorium Widgets and purchased 4 Gold Power Cores. In total, I'd easily estimate that these materials set me back over 200 gold, and that's without factoring in the cost of leveling my engineering. Now I'm only missing the final ingredient, 8 delicate arcanite converters. It looks like a really cheap thing to buy because it looks like a little widget. To my surprise, arcanite bars cost 55 gold a pop, which means there's no way I could afford my epic mount if I were to craft this cool little dragon I wanted. So I decided to yet again stop fucking around at Ironforge and continue the goddamn quest. I assemble a group of Azeroth's finest warriors, then walk my character from Thorium Point into Blackrock Spire. No, seriously, the whole way. Oh my god. Once we enter the dungeon, I actually felt menacing vibrations surrounding me, and I knew I was in for a bad time. Our first white was on this pole. At first I wasn't exactly sure why we died, you see I focus on the important stuff. Set my character to follow someone else and go roll a cup of tea. Once we try again, I find out the hard way that these mobs have knocked back, and also don't step on the eggs. We clear out the gauntlet. Blizzard thought it'd be fun to make players wait an unreasonable two minutes in between each pack of easily beatable trash mobs before we finally get to kill Rend Blackhand, who drops nothing useful, and we really just waited 15 minutes for the bonding experience. Next up, we kill the Beast, who drops the Blademaster leggings, some nice leather pants that are incredible for rogue players. I need them for my collection of items that I'm never actually gonna wear unless I roll one very specific spec where they might be useful, which I won't. <laughs> then we wiped against the trash mobs. I set my character to follow and go take a shit. After dropping King Kong's finger, we wipe to the same group of trash mobs and repeat the process. Except I didn't take a shit this time. 
because I had I had already on the bridge in front of the final room with the final boss. We yet again all get decimated by a pack of trash mobs. I'm starting to see a pattern here, and I'm ever so slightly concerned about our ability to actually kill the boss. Yet I remain hopeful and vigilant. Put yourself in my shoes. There's one pack of mobs between you and General Dracosath. The last foe remaining for you to be done with the Onyxia questline. You put on your mind control helmet because you want to be certain that the mobs don't wipe your party once more. When you intersect with the brainwaves of thy enemy, you realize his mind is simply too strong. And in a terrible turn of fate, you get mind controlled by him. Now you join Onyxia's army and decide to live out the rest of your days as a dragon. Unfortunately, mere seconds later, the astrally projected hallucinogenic brainwaves wear off and your soft, tender, petite, warm, gentle night elf soul is immediately detected by the ruthless monster surrounding you, leaving you torn to shreds immediately. Once we finally stand before General Dracoseth, we properly execute the fight by having one player leash the boss whilst everyone else takes care of the smaller mobs. Then General Dracoseth violated our party without even losing half his health. I was actually the lone survivor. I managed to somehow survive in this little crevice and I would go on to escape the crevice and use my goblin jumper cables to resurrect our priest who would go on to resurrect our whole party and then they wouldn't have to walk all the way. And actually, uh, of course that's not true. <laughs> so again we try and Again, we wipe, making this a two plus hour long UBRS run. Wow, man, and leaves, and our weak willed party gives up. So I did what any reasonable, strong willed individual would given my circumstances. I stopped roping and started coping. I played Warsong Gulch for two hours, and then I took just under two hours to complete Motherload Goldium, a nostalgic game from my childhood. At 1am, I finally felt clean from my last dungeon experience and went for round two. This is how I can tell I'm gonna have a good time in World of Warcraft. If there's one single guy from my guild in my party, I know I'm in good company. Surrounded by iron-willed Azeroth commandos, Fucking guerrilla soldiers of the Alliance. We cleared our way to Pyroguard Emberseer with streamlined proficiency, and he drops the True Strike shoulders, the pre raid best in slot shoulders with a 10% drop rate. Absolutely juicy shit. However, I've used up all my lucky rolls on death rolling, and my five simply won't cut it. Although the redemption to this run came shortly thereafter when we killed Rend and he dropped Blackhand's Doomsong. You don't need to roll higher than two if you're the only cunt in the party who's so underleveled that it's actually an upgrade. Anyways, the rest of the dungeon was a fucking breeze, and I truly think this is how you're supposed to experience the game. When you're in a guild that's not trash, and you play with the people that aren't trash, this 15-year-old game actually becomes semi-playable. We take out General Dracosath, and I return to Winterspring. Do the Satan jump, and finally finish the Onyxia questline by forging the Drake Fire Amulet, which will in the future give us access to the Onyxia raid. Not today though, I told you, this is the boring episode. So two levels away from 60, I decided to undertake yet another unbearable, repetitive, monotonous, terrible quest. Specifically, the line that leads to the Mark of Forging, the pre-raid best in slot amulet. Before starting the quest, I naturally had to level my polearm skills. I'll admit, even I was taken aback when Amiri asked me to strike her. Although in such a predicament, I set aside my delicate sensibilities. You see, I'm not one to let down a woman. Sadly, duels don't increase your weapon skills, and I'd have to farm something else to master my new weapon. My scheming WoW GF capitalized on the opportunity at hand and made me boost her alt by spamming the worst dungeon in the game. I'm getting rinsed here. 
After mastering my new weapon, I began the three pre-quests. I journey to the Eastern Plague Lands, and Tyrion Fordring tasks me to kill 30 plague bats, 30 various hounds, and procure 15 slabs of carrion worm meat. An hour later, I got the privilege to even begin the actual questline. Redemption. Listen to Tyrion Fordring's tale. I'm ready to hear your tale, Tyrion. Thank you, Tyrion. That is terrible. I will, Tyrion. Done. Simple enough. So far, so good. Then this moral hero of the Alliance asks me to go dig up a grave. A grave which is located a moderate distance from our current location. I do it, no questions asked. And on a side note, how did I dig crypt robbers out of the grave? That makes no sense. This game sucks. Game sucks. The thing about World of Warcraft is that it's bad. The, what you really need to understand is that this game sucks so much. <laughs> Anyways, I return Talon's hammer and begin part three of Lost Honor. Now we're here. Before we had to go down there, and now we gotta go all the way up here. Great. 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 <laughs> I love it. Once more, we make our way through the toxic wasteland, kill a plague monstrosity, and at the bottom of a lake, I recover the symbol of lost honor. Travel all the way back to Tyrion and begin part four of Love and Family. And this quest actually has an interesting dynamic that truly immerses you into this engaging gameplay experience. You have to travel very far from one place to another. Whoa. This really is World of Warcraft at its best. The second part of this quest had us tasked with conquering the Stratholm dungeon. No, not the fun undead side where you can get the loot your character needs so badly, but rather the shitty live side that people only play to farm orbs which sell for a hefty price on the auction house. So I went to Ironforge and gathered a squad. Just kidding, I was death rolling. I don't have footage of when I gathered the squad. We entered Strat Live. Now the first handful of wipes was complimentary. It's honestly just par for the course at this point. Now what you really gotta pay attention to is right here, in the last hallway before killing the final boss needed for this quest. Mind you, at 6.30 AM with half my armor in the red, I accidentally pull a patrol of mobs that go on to devastate my comrades. Naturally, the better player survives the fight only for my goblin jumper cables to malfunction. My comrades walk a gruesome distance and then immediately wipe so fucking hard on the next pole. Having been pushed to the limit of his emotional detriment, Camara leaves us one man short, one pull away from the final boss, and with a heavy heart I return to Ironforge. Luckily though, I got roped back into this dreadful questline when Ori came through and stepped up to the challenge. I steal a painting and burn the holy scriptures, fight Grand Crusader Dathrohan, who uses Bankai mid-fight and transforms into the demon Balnazar. After killing Balnagar, I attempt to die on purpose, but this stupid gnome mage is on his bullshit. After appropriately disposing of the gnome, I spirit res and return to Tyrion. He gives me a gift and I travel to Uther's tomb in the southern Plaguelands, where we meet Miranda the Hag. Hmm. She's a cosplayer who helps us dress up as Scarlet Crusaders for the final part of this quest chain. The Scarlet Subterfuge. With our immaculate disguises, we breeze past hordes of enemies that have not the faintest idea that they're undergoing trickery of the highest caliber. We zoom straight past these idiots and make our way to Highlord Talon Fordring. As we stay in cosplay and convince the man to murder his own army, it dawns on me that this isn't Comic Con, this is an escort mission. Now, you could choose to unveil your disguise and fight alongside Talon, but why actually play the game when you have a man on your side so powerful that he can jump through the floor? No, no, me and Ori had much better things to do with our time than racking up a repair bill, like walking in circles, doing the dance, RP walking, and questioning where Talon got a horse of that size. By the way, he got extremely close to dying once. You're probably supposed to help him. 
After RP walking for 20 minutes, Talon Fordring finally arrives at his destination, where he fights some trash mobs and somehow dies in one hit for no reason. Then you literally have to wait about 5 minutes for Tyrion to arrive. As we pass 8am, I finally complete the questline to receive the Mark of Fordring, an absolutely fantastic amulet. I'll have you know that in two weeks of my life, I completed two quests in World of Warcraft, and I unironically think I live a pretty fulfilling life. Now you're sitting there in your chair, slumped over, with brain fog, a smelly t-shirt, and a big Adam's apple. Practically a zombie at this point. And I ask you, where's your fucking sense of urgency? Fix your goddamn posture. Sit up straight like an adult. Just fucking grow up already. Look at the level. Look at it. Look at my XP. Can't you see that I'm about to ascend? Wasn't it obvious I lied all along and played you all like a goddamn fiddle? Strung you up like a fucking violin. This isn't the boring episode. This is the episode where I FUCKING RISE! 334 hours of my life. Pain, blood, sweat and tears. Discovering this beautiful world, including its ugly side. Dungeons at 4am. Gnomes. ADHD rogue players. Innumerable hoard encounters, repetitive, soul-draining 15-year-old game mechanics, two fully-fledged World of Warcraft e-relationships, getting our mount, the crippling gambling addiction, farming dungeons over and over again for necessary items with rewarding drop rates, getting the Whirlwind X, albeit morally abrupt, clicking my abilities, joining a guild, Paying Compound his own money to farm Hand of Justice. Leveling Engineering to 300. Scamming that sucker for all he had. God, I have so many fucking treasured memories in this game. I told you to sit up straight, but that's not gonna cut it, soldier. I'm gonna need you to take a stand. I'm not kidding, this is to the viewers. Stand up right now. December 15th, 2019. On this day, a legend of Azeroth is born. 334 hours ago, I was but a strand of DNA in the nutsack that is Teldrassil. With no real 9 to 5 occupation and absolutely very little responsibility, I've taken you all along my journey to become a full-fledged fucking primate, an Azeroth commando soldier, a fucking hero of the Alliance! What did I say? I'm quick on my feet, vicious, some would even go so far as to call me nimble. It wasn't easy, I wanted to quit many times, but I persevered and overcame harsh adversity. For the first 150 hours, I read every quest. It took me about 250 hours to find out that I can interrupt spellcast with Pommel. I leveled from 0 to 60 on a horde dominated PvP server as a warrior. I was level 48 when phase 2 dropped. Every level 60 player could get honored by ganking me. And I played throughout the entire thing. All of this. Every pull. Every mob. Every single corpse walk. Each step. Every single death roll, each line of dialogue during cringy role-playing, every single pop retaliation, every goddamn fucking ninja loot, every dungeon played out till 5am, and every party abandoned in cold blood has led me to this very moment in time. One mob away from 60. My squad of ruthless warriors kneel before me and let me finish the job with the gnomish death ray. I told you! I don't fuck around! I'm the goddamn king! I love this shit! A bit anticlimactic that I overestimated the damage. So that's when we pulled out the gap. <laughs> And yeah, um, reaching level 60 was actually super anticlimactic. The only immediate difference was that I was now no longer granted dopamine points for playing the game. The run went kinda shitty, and we wiped several times and the bow didn't drop. But you have to realize, the ecstasy of reaching level 60 actually comes about half an hour later at a certain vendor in Darnassus. I trade my 900 gold for the Swift Frost Saber. And 
then one morning, I caught a certain individual logging into Ironforge and appropriately informed him that riding my new mount was a most dope experience. <laughs> <laughs>